Today I'm going to talk about using fonts in Flutter. So using fonts was already easy, but if you use the Google fonts package, then it's even easier. So if you can see here, I have a font screen. It's a stateful widget, a font screen state here, and I have a scaffold with an app bar, a centered column, and I have a text that says Google fonts here. So pretty simple stuff, very basic. Um, in my main.dart, I'm just importing the font screen here and using it for the home widget. Okay, so let's go to the internet and I'm at the Google fonts package in pub.dev. So this is the package that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial video. Uh, it walks you through a lot of different ways to use Google fonts and I'm going to touch on each one of these here. So as you can see here, I'm on the google.fonts or fonts.google page here. And you can see we have a lot of different fonts to choose from. And I also opened this page here in the docs to show you how to use a custom font. So if you're new to Flutter, this is probably the way that you learned how to use fonts if you've already learned how to do so. You would add it to your pubspec file and then just add it as an asset here. So let's go to the code. And in my pubspec file, I've already added the Google fonts package here. And down here, I've added the font family for a font called Satisfy. So if we go to the Google fonts and type in satisfy, um, oh, actually, hold on, search satisfy. So that's the satisfy font here that I'll be using for the font asset. Okay, so if you go back to the app here, this is how you would normally import a font into your app and use it. So then you would go to your main.dart page and in your theme data, there's a field called font family, and then you would actually just name it the same as you name in your postback file. So we have font family satisfy. So we can copy and paste this into the main.dart, and then press save. And let's reload our app here. And now you can see that all of our fonts have changed to this satisfy font. So this is a pretty basic way of using fonts, but now we're gonna get rid of this font family here. And let's actually get rid of that from our pub spec too. So let's comment this out here. So now we have no fonts in our app and we can get rid of the font here. So I forgot to mention this too. To add a new font to your app, you would add it as a TTF file in a folder called either assets or fonts. So I used fonts. So that's why it was looking for fonts dash or fonts slash satisfy regular. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of this font here. Okay. So that folder is gone now. So let's go back to our uh, font screen here and in the docs for Google fonts, I want to import this Google fonts package. Okay. And now for our text here. So first I want to say Google, fonts for our class and then dot and now you can see a list of our google fonts here so there's many many different fonts if you want to look at the fonts in the class directly you can go to definition here and then you can go down here and then you can see all of the fonts here so let's say google fonts and then i'm just going to pick one at random uh let's go to the uh list here and I'm just going to pick something that looks very interesting. Let's do Pacifico. Okay, so let's do Google Fonts.Pacifico. Okay, and let's save, reload. So something that I noticed when you're using Google Fonts a lot in your app, you might need to not hot reload, but actually restart through the app, like do a hot restart instead of a hot reload. So actually let's stop this and you might need to do a flutter clean too, so. It's kind of a pain to do that, but every once in a while you should clean your Flutter build anyways. And now we can do a Flutter run. Okay, and now you can see we have our Pacifico font here. So we can change this to see if it actually works. We can do uh, ABZ and let's do reload. And now you can see we have a different font here. And one more time, let's do Macondo. And then let's reload. 
And now you can see we have our Macondo font here. Let's add some styling to this to make it look a little bit better. So instead of this function, you can add your own styling. So you can use text style and font style here if you want to, but you can also define the styles directly. So instead of doing that, you could say font size and let's do 32. Okay, let's save and let's reload. And I can see our font is bigger. Okay, so now I'm going to actually create two different text here. So let's copy and paste this here. I showed you how to define the font types directly here using Google Fonts dot your font. But there's also another way to define your fonts. You can actually say Google Fonts dot get font. So now you can define your font family here. So this is useful if you want to dynamically change your fonts in your app. So let's go back to the fonts here and I'm going to pick Arvo. So let's go back and type in Arvo. Make sure that it's capitalized. So Arvo. And now let's save and reload. So now you can see we have two different fonts here. And I'm going to add a font size to this. So font size, let's do 32. Okay, and let's reload. So now we have two different text fields here using two different methods here in your Google Fonts package. So let's say we want to have the user choose the font that they want for this second text field here. To do that is actually pretty easy. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here and I'm going to create a list of fonts. So I'm going to say list string and then I'm going to name this fonts and then we're going to have an array. So for this array, I'm going to create different font strings. So first let's put in Arvo. Oops, Arvo. And then I'm going to just uh, pick from some random something interesting. I'm going to try to use one word fonts to make it faster. So let's say Prata, Prata and Orbitron. Okay, so let's do Prata Orbitron. Let's do two more here. Um, let's find a thick font. So Ultra and we'll do Monotone, Monoton or Monoton. So Monoton and Ultra. Monotron and Ultra. Hope I spell those right. Okay, so now we have a list of string fonts. And I also want to create a state for our font selected. So I'm going to say string font. And this will be only default font to be something. Uh, let's do error p so equals error p spell that correctly okay so this will be our default font for our second text widget okay so let's put this font into here okay let's save and reload okay so that's our error p font here so now I want to create a list here. I'm going to say list view dot separate it. Put this on different lines. I'm going to say item count equals fonts dot length. And for the item builder, let's put this at the end here. So let's do item builder here. And for the item builder, I want this to have our normal context. So it'll have our build context. This next value will be index. And now I want to return the widget that we want to use for our list. So I'm going to have just a flat button. So I'm going to return a flat button. And the child is going to be just a text. So let's do text. And the text for the button will be the text of the font index here. So we'll do font, fonts. And then we'll say index. Okay, so now let's add an on press for our button here. And for the on press, I'm going to set the state of our font, our font here, our string font. 
So I'm going to have a arrow function and I'm going to say set state. And then I'm going to set our state to be equal to that string. So it's going to be fonts index. So the text of our button is one of these strings and the font string that we are setting for our Google font here is also going to be the same string based on the index. Okay, and now let's build our separator up here. Oops, before I do that, this should just be context. Let's just call this context. It could be whatever you want though. So we're not defining the class type here. Context, index, and then we can have an arrow function that just returns our divider. Okay, so let's save and let's restart. Okay, so we're missing a few different things here. It says that a size is missing here. So our constraints for our list are, is not defined. So a good way to fix this is to use shrink wrap for your list view. So let's do shrink wrap and let's set it to true. If you don't know what shrink wrap is, you can look at this here. It says creates a fixed length scrollable linear array of list items separated by list item separators. Okay. So it shrinks the size of the list view to the size of your data here. Okay, so let's save and restart. So now you can see we have a list of fonts here. While we're here, I want to create some spacing between our widgets. So I'm going to go up here to our alignment and I'm going to change this to space between. So let's save, reload. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Let's add some more padding to this entire thing. Let's do 32 here. Okay, that looks fine. Let's go down here to our flat button and I'm gonna add a color. And let's do colors dot black. And for the font, for the text font here, I want to add some styling. So I'm gonna say style. Let's do text style. And I'm gonna say font size. Let's make this the same as everything else. So let's say 32. And then I'm going to say color equals white because we have a black button. So let's save and reload. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. So we have five buttons here that represents each of our five fonts. And we change the font state when we press a button. So let's press these buttons here now. So let's say Arvo, it changed to Arvo font. Prada, it changed the font. Orbitron, uh, Monotron. So I messed up that font name. So you be careful about your font names here. Monoton, okay. Monoton, okay. So let's reload. Let's go back to our monotone. Okay, now you can see it's monotone here. And now let's do ultra. And I can see we did ultra here. Okay, so now we can cycle through these and we can change our font dynamically in the app. Okay, so to make this look a little bit more like an actual app, let's change the button fonts to be the same as the actual font itself. So let's go down here to our flat button. And instead of the text out here, I want to put our Google fonts here. So let's do Google fonts dot get font. And then we'll do the same thing as up here. So let's just copy and paste this. Okay. And we also want to do the color here. So let's do color colors dot white. Okay. And let's reload. Oh yeah, so I define it as the actual color that we're using. So that's not what I want to do for this. I want the font to be the fonts.index. So let's save, reload. So now the text of our buttons has the font that the button is changing for our Google Fonts text here. And let's just add a little bit of padding here to make this look a little bit better. So let's do padding, edge insets, all, let's do like something, maybe eight. Reload. Okay, that looks really nice. 
And then let's go back to the style from before. And then let's put back in the padding here. Okay, so now we have a normal font. So let's say you want a certain font to be used throughout your entire app. So doing that is actually pretty easy. We can go back to our main. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a text theme. So in your theme data, there's a field called text theme. So text theme. And then this takes in a, if you look at the text theme, it takes in a text theme widget. But instead, we're going to use a Google font widget. So Google fonts dot. And then we want a text theme here. So you have to use a different type of widget. So use Google fonts dot. Then I'm going to use a different font. Let's say bad script. So dot bad script. So every font function here, like every function that you have that says like bad script or monotone also has a text theme equivalent here. So if you're defining your text theme, then you want to use this function here. Use bad script text theme. So this returns a type of text theme, which is what you want for this field here. Okay, so let's save and let's restart the app. So now you can see all of our buttons have this bad script theme. And that's because we're using this bad script text theme throughout our entire app. So the reason why you don't see it for Google Fonts here is because we are changing those fonts in the code in our font screen. So that's overriding this bad script text theme. To prove that it's true, let's go back to our text widget up here. And we'll get rid of this Google Fonts, and we'll just put a text out here. And then we'll do the same here for the second one. Let's get rid of this. And then let's reload. I guess restarting would be better here. So restart. OK, and now you can see that these two text widgets here now have the same font as defined in our text theme. So this text theme overrides all of our theme data for our fonts. Except up here, you can see in our header, the font style did not change. OK, so keep that in mind too. So there's a little bit more that we can do with Google Fonts too. So let's say that we want to define different Google Fonts for different parts of our app, for like different types of widgets in our app. The example that I'm going to use for this video is I'm going to define a different global font for our buttons. I'm going to get rid of this here, and I'm going to say text theme, and then I'm going to say Google Fonts. And let's use a different font. Let's use a, um, let's just use a very bold font, candle. I'm going to say candle text theme. Then I'm going to say copy with. So copy with, you can see that here it says, creates a copy of this text theme, but with the given fields replaced with the new values. So we're going to define specific fields in our app with a certain theme. Okay. So copy with. And if you don't know what all the different fields are, you can look in this here. And you see we have headline one, headline two, body one, body two, caption, button. So there's not many different choices here. But um, if you want to have certain text for all of your buttons only in your app, then this button text name style is what you want to use here. So let's go back here and let's use the button field here. and you can see it's a textile. But for this one, I want to say Google fonts dot. Uh, so we're using our candle theme for our text theme. But for our buttons, I want to use, um, let's say, Allen. So dot Allen. OK, so now this is our candle text theme here. And this is Allen. So Allen will be used for all of our buttons. And the candle theme will be used for everything else. So this is the global text for your entire app. And this is specific to your buttons. So I hope that makes sense. So yeah, stay tuned for the next video. And happy coding. Bye.